because nothing, and I mean nothing, helps you get debt-free faster and financially fit faster than increasing your take-home pay. Welcome back to my channel. If you are returning, hi friends. And if you are new here, I'm Vicky G. And on this channel, I share my experiences living a victorious life. And today I am sharing actions that I took to maximize my income because nothing helps you get financially fit and debt-free faster than increasing your take home pay. Now, this is not a list of side hustles because that's the first thing that comes up whenever you do a search for how to maximize your income. This is five actions that I took in order to make more money so that I can take more home. <laughs> And that is actually the second thing that comes up whenever you do a search for how to maximize your income. So we're going to get into that today, but I do want to say for context sake that I have only worked in two major industries, which is education and healthcare. And these are actions that I took across um, the different types of companies that I worked for, whether they were nonprofit or government agencies or private companies. So just keep that in mind as I'm going through these actions because they may or may not apply to your current um, situation because different industries have different cultures, different setups have different um, you know, ways to go about um, advancing in one's role. So um, I'm just saying that what I'm sharing may not apply to you, but these are actions that I took to get jobs that pay more. So let's get into it. By the way, you don't need to do these in any particular order. You can mix and match, do them all at once, whatever floats your boat. Okay, let's get into the first one, which is to create a skills inventory. Now, a skills inventory is just a list of the skills that you are bringing to your job every single day. They can be character-based, like being reliable, trustworthy, punctual, and they definitely need to be experience and skills-based. For example, I'm a project manager, I have a PMP, so I'm bringing the skill sets that accompany us being a certified project manager to my job every single day. Plus, I'm bringing the particular areas that I have had experience in um, leading projects and the size of the projects too. So I say all of that to say, list out your experience, list out your certification, list out your character traits, list it all out because a skills inventory is for you. It's for you to see, okay, my company hired me to do a role. This is what they're getting. This is the deliverables that I am producing for them. This is the skill sets that basically that they pay for, quite frankly. And so when you actually have eyes on that, then it, the second thing that it does is that it gives you confidence, confidence to then apply for those jobs that are going to pay you more. You know, study shows that minority women, and as you can see, I'm a black woman, we tend to undervalue our skills, undervalue our experience, undervalue our knowledge, and therefore we don't tend to take leaps of confidence into next levels, next level roles, leadership positions, so forth and so on. So what a skills inventory does is for one, you to see the value that you're bringing to the table and two, you to have confidence as you apply for those jobs that are going to pay you more for the value that you are bringing to the table. I want to pause real quick and encourage you to put any additional thoughts and input in the comments below so that we can really edify our community. Okay, on to the next one. Next is to turn something that could be kind of a negative into an opportunity to get your next higher paying role. And that is using a less than stellar annual review to get you that next higher paying role. And you may ask, Vicki, have you really had a less than stellar annual review? Well, yes, yes, yes I have. And I have used it to catapult me into an even better position. And this is how I did it. So now, mind you, my annual review wasn't subpar, it was just average. It, but once I received that, hey, you're doing as ex per expectations, I, I asked my boss, I said, well, what would excellent or above your expectations look like if I had done a job 
that exceeded your expectations, what would I have done? And what that did was for him to tell me what exact job actions would have resulted in an above average, above expectation performance rating. For example, he shared that something that he, I was doing, which was great, was telling the, the team, okay, this is the percent change from last last period's actions to this period's actions. But what would have been really helpful was not only for me to have presented that information to the team, but also to have identified the different possible causes of the change for the team to have less work to do to drill down to the actual causes for those differences. And then even above that would have been if I had made a, a PowerPoint deck that he could then present to his leaders that whenever he had to go report on that particular um, project. So I had everything clearly spelled out as to what I should do from that point forward. Now, even though quite honestly, it, those actions that he shared would be above average was things that the team, in my opinion, was supposed to be doing. But regardless, right or wrong, those were what he considered to be above average, above expectations, um, you know, actions. And so I did them. And even before the next review period, I was able to apply and get a higher paying position. Next on the list is to identify your champion. So this is different than a mentor and a sponsor and i really don't know what the difference is between a sponsor and a mentor that is beside the point though <laughs> this is a champion this is somebody who's going to talk about you in a positive light in rooms that you are not in so ideally you want your champion to be somebody who attends meetings that are high above your pay grade where they're going to have access to issues and problems and opportunities that need to be solved and then your name will be presented so you're looking for someone who is in the roles that you're aspiring to or you're looking for somebody who has um, responsibilities over hiring different types of individuals that you might aspire to now for me my champions have always been my bosses my bosses are constantly attending meetings where they're being presented with different problems to solve and it never fails in every position that I have held my bosses have brought up my name to lead a particular project that will solve an issue that the company is having. And so that's kind of what you're wanting. You're wanting them to be thinking of you as, okay, we have this uh, role or this scenario, we want, insert your name here, to take care of it. And so that definitely will open up doors for you to get jobs that pay more. This next one is a little multi-layered because it's something you've heard before but may not have been put in, into action. Um, I know I hadn't been putting it into action until I became more focused on trying to get a higher paying job and that is to build your professional network. I also didn't pay it too much mind because I wasn't really clear on how to do that. I mean, whenever I think about building your network, I just think of getting a whole bunch of business cards, yes? I'm kind of dating myself. I'm from a time when we actually got physical cards and not the electronic kinds. But anyways, but yes, building your personal network, I mean, building your professional network was a little bit like pie in the sky for me until I got some actual practical things that I could do. The first practical thing that I started doing right away, right away was asking people that I admired to have coffee and then during that coffee um, meeting I would just ask them questions about the position tell me what you do and how do you do it now you might think this is something for the college intern person but no no it is not wherever you're at in your profession there's somebody you admire you can ask them to coffee and have them tell you what they do, how they got into the role. Let me tell you something. People love to talk about themselves, okay? They love to. Now, it's not going to be like a half hour meeting or anything. Make it a 15 minute meeting or a 10 minute meeting or whatever, or quick chat. People are also very busy and they, aren't got, they don't have a lot of time, especially if you're looking for somebody at a very high level. But anyway, ask them to coffee. That's building your professional network. You'll have their contact information. They'll have high regards for you because you're inquisitive. They'll put your name to their other contacts. So yes, try it. 
see how it works for you. It has definitely worked numbers for me. I continue to do it to this day. So have a coffee meetings to build your professional network. And of course, there is LinkedIn. You know, in LinkedIn, you can definitely build your professional network by, um, you know, what is it called? Contacting people, connecting with people that you've worked for, that you used to work for, that you um, just building your network that way and getting to know the people that they work for, so forth and so on. So definitely utilizing LinkedIn connections and having coffee chats with people you admire. And the last one on the list is to practice your interview skills. Yes, Yes, you know, you are going to go on interviews to get your next job. You went on interviews to get this current job. So for that next level job, you want to be on point when it comes to interviewing for it. Now, I attended this amazing, amazing half day workshop and um, we were given materials, we were recorded, we were given feedback. It was so great, it was so helpful. And the instructor for that workshop has condensed it and get, given me an hour version of that half day workshop and I'll link it below for those of you interested in working on your interviewing skills to um, have access to. Let me tell you what, shortly after, I think it was a month, a month after enter, at, attending that class uh, or that workshop, I landed the highest paying job I'd ever um, applied for before in my whole career. So I say that to say practice, whether you use the interviewing um, video link that I will have down below, or you record yourself or practice in a mirror, get a, a buddy to practice with just practice you'll find out that there are different mannerisms that you do that you may not do i obviously talk with my hands if you haven't noticed that but using that to your advantage and being more natural and comfortable and keyword confident confident when you interview so yes practice your interviewing skills so that you can get that higher paying job and get debt free and financially fit faster. Okay guys, that does it for today's video. If you haven't already, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you think will gain value from the video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to put any additional thoughts, comments, um, ideas down below. Let me know if you do any of the actions and how they work out for you. And yeah, again, I think there's nothing left to say. I am so glad to have you part of this community. If you haven't joined it already, go ahead and subscribe and welcome to the Victorious community. Thank you guys again, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.